For Comedy Hype News, I'm Tatiana LaJoy. Pushing boundaries through satire has been a staple of comedy in America for decades. Blackface dates back to the 1830s as a form of entertainment where white performers use makeup to darken their complexion to appear African American. These characteristics were usually featured in minstrel shows, which were an American form of racist television to reenact and mock black racial stereotypes, such as singing and dancing of slaves. In these shows, black people were either portrayed as slow, stupid, or violent. Blackface has been used to appropriate the black culture for decades. A film called Birth of a Nation was released in 1915 and is known as being technically brilliant, artistically breathtaking, and cinematically genius, all the while being belligerently racist. In addition to blackface, the film depicts lynching as being a good thing and how some black people deserved it while others didn't. In 1922, the movie was seen by 5 million people making it America's first blockbuster and the first film to ever be shown in the White House. This movie also ignited the reestablishment of the KKK, which was somewhat a dead organization at the time. Today, many people have concerns of whether or not this movie and others like it should be banned. Professor Alan Rice, a Birth of a Nation expert at the Institute for Black Atlantic Research at the University of Central Lancashire said, when it is shown, it should be shown within the context of a debate. Censoring it would make it more underground. It would play into the hands of the racists who would say, we can't debate with the film. Honoring this perspective today has been misinterpreted into people thinking that blackface is a tool that can be used in art to ignite debate and controversy. Modern movies such as Tropic Thunder have displayed blackface and excused it with artistic intent. Granted, Tropic Thunder's premise is satirical, but it begs the question if Hollywood writers are intentionally trying to educate or appropriate the shameful history of blackface. Why is Robert Downey Jr.'s character not seen as insidious and dehumanizing as it was back in the early 1900s? Here's why Robert Downey Jr. got away with blackface in Tropic Thunder. The definition of satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. Tropic Thunder is a 2008 satirical comedy about a group of actors making a war movie who are forced to experience the story of soldiers they are playing in real life. The film stars Ben Stiller, who also co-wrote the screenplay, Jack Black, and Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. plays Kirk Lazarus, a five-time Oscar-winning Australian method actor who undergoes a surgical procedure to darken his skin color to appear as a black person. He adopts an exaggerated black vernacular and perpetuates black stereotypes throughout the entire film without breaking character. Kirk Lazarus unveils the belief that many white male method actors possess, which is thinking that they can play any role as long as they are method enough. An actual black person, a rapper named Al Pacino, constantly criticizes Kirk within the film. This awareness is certainly a modern occurrence since in postmodern films, when white actors would wear blackface, the black actors wouldn't say anything and acted like it was normal. Is this Hollywood's way of saying that racial awareness has improved? or an indication of Hollywood's undeveloped understanding of blackface. The movie received contradictory reviews. The positive reviewers appreciated the clever mockery the movie made about Hollywood. The negative reviews criticized the writer's insensitivity towards topics such as racism and discrimination against people with disabilities. On the podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, Robert Downey Jr. said, 90% of my black friends were like, dude, that was great. His performance even earned him nominations from the Oscars, Golden Globes, and Screen Actors Guild Awards for Best Supporting Actor. The fact that Downey Jr. was nominated for all major awards is yet another satirization of major actors who are willing to do anything to receive praise and recognition. Downey Jr. was also making fun of actors like Christian Bale who take their craft so seriously they're willing to go to great lengths to put on the best performance. In the past, Bale has lost 60 pounds for a role, put on weight and muscle to play Batman, lost 30 pounds for a role, gained 40 pounds for another role. This was all for the sake of giving a convincing performance. When people see the movie in the context of the film, he's playing a method actor who's gone to great lengths to play a black guy. The movie is skewing actors on how they take themselves so seriously. Ben Stiller. On the flip side, there were others who heavily criticized him, despite the fact that the director, star, and writer previewed the film for the NAACP before it was even released. 
Downey said that his mother was even very skeptical about him playing this role. Root, an African-American online magazine, criticized Tropic Thunder by saying, a century after D.W. Griffith's classic, The Birth of a Nation, some white folks still think it's okay to parade around in blackface. Hell, many feel empowered in the march to the post-racial America. Whoa, Nelly, it's not okay. It's obnoxious, easy, and pathetic. Downey replied by saying, I can't disagree with them, but I know where my heart was. It's never an excuse to do something that is out of place and not of its time, but to me, it was just putting a blasting cap on. At the end of the day, it's always about how you commit to the character. If I didn't feel it was morally sound or that it would be easily misinterpreted that I'm just C. Thomas Howell, I would have stayed home. Robert Downey Jr. Downey wasn't the only one who had to defend himself for using blackface. Jimmy Kimmel once did an impression of Carl Malone and the makeup artist gave him blackface. In his apology, he stated that when a white person dons blackface makeup, it's not meant to be convincing or realistic. Blackface is meant to exaggerate difference. White Chicks starring Sean and Marlon Wayans came out in 2004 and had some controversial reviews as well. Conservatives felt that the movie exhibited reverse racism since it featured two black men imitating white women. Sean Wayans defended the movie by saying, White Chicks isn't racist. It's a buddy cop comedy where two men are pretending to be white girls to take down a kidnapper. If you look at White Chicks, the jokes are on African American culture. How is that racist? All the punchlines are us making fun of us in situations where white folks is around. It's not us making fun of white people. Some people criticize white chicks as being a form of reverse racism. However, reverse racism is a myth since the term racism is predicated by its systemic relationship to power. Therefore, it's fair to argue that it is racially prejudiced, but not racist. Blackface is racist because it contributes to the discrimination and oppression of black people. The racial prejudice that white people might feel when they watch white chicks may hurt their feelings, but it can never hurt said white person's social, economical, or political privileges. This is why Charlemagne the God gets away with calling white people jars of mayonnaise on a weekly basis on the morning radio show The Breakfast Club. May seem a little hypocritical, but think about it the same way as how white people can't say the N-word. The N-word was used to dehumanize African Americans and was usually the last words heard by a black person being lynched. There's no slur in the English language that is so pervasively dehumanizing. Like the N-word, blackface is so embedded in American history that many people are unaware that Jim Crow laws originated from a blackface character played by a white actor named Thomas Dartmouth Rice. The minstrel character was so impactful that his name was used as a shorthand to demean, segregate, and oppress African Americans from the 1870s to the 1960s. It's safe to say that blackface is just as offensive as a white person saying the N-word. So how did Robert Downey Jr. get away with it? Comedians use satire, metaphors, and exaggerations all the time to shine the light on concealed topics. Supporters of Tropic Thunder argue that the movie is so outrageous and obviously satirical that it would seem silly to take offense to it since it is meant to be offensive. There are other examples in Hollywood where blackface was used, such as Jimmy Fallon's impression of Chris Rock on Saturday Night Live, or Jack Black in Be Kind Rewind. The reason why these cases were offensive is because of their intention. Filmmakers should ask themselves what their motivation is for using blackface in their film. Is blackface being used as a quick and dirty method of depravity of the white character? It's hard to pinpoint any jokes featuring a blackface actor that doesn't result in the same reaction from the audience thinking that the person is just being ridiculous. The dehumanization is overlooked even though its residue still seeps into the audience's subconscious and inevitably affects how our society functions on a greater scale. It's natural to assume that the primary intention for using blackface is provocation. Could Robert Downey Jr. accomplish the intention behind this absurd character without being in blackface? Perhaps. But although he was skating on thin ice, Robert Downey Jr. got away with blackface because I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. He wasn't playing a black person. He was playing an egotistical and arrogant actor. His talent shined through as he embodied the nuances of a black man without making a mockery of the African-American culture. In an interview on the Joe Rogan podcast, Downey said, hold on dude, get real here. Where is your heart? My heart is A, I get to be black for a summer in my mind, so there's something in it for me. 
The other thing is, I get to hold up to nature the insane, self-involved hypocrisy of artists and what they think they're allowed to do on occasion. To top it off, Robert Downey Jr. got praised for many people in the black community for how accurate his depiction of a black man was. It was realistic and truthful without being over the top, even though the whole concept of the character is outrageous. Brandon T. Jackson's character Al Pacino also helped keep the story grounded by giving black people a representative to call out Kirk Lazarus's absurdities. The audience felt the genuine sincerity that Downey's heart truly was in the right place when he played this role by making Tropic Thunder a masterpiece and his character, Kirk Lazarus, a legend. Brandon T. Jackson said, when I first read the script, I was like, what, blackface? But when I saw him act, he like became a black man. It was just good acting. It was weird on the set because he would keep going with the character. He's a method actor. Could a character like Kirk Lazarus be featured in a film today? Or do you think this movie was created at the perfect point in time? Let us know in the comments below. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Tatiana LaJoy.